All right, I'm coming to you today. My name is Lady Latanja, and I'm coming to you today with a message on my channel about the Daniel Fast. That's right, the Daniel Fast, okay? So I'm going to start off with prayer, and then we're going to go into Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. Okay, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you today for your grace, your mercy, your favor. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Father, uh, be with me now. Strengthen me and help me, God, to speak what is pleasing in your eyesight. Use my heart, my mind, and my spirit for your glory. Use this channel for your glory. Use this vessel, God. Indwell in me and use me even right now. Let me not to come from my head, but help me to come from my heart and to teach about the Daniel fast. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. <clears throat> the Daniel fast. Daniel chapter 1. So we know that there was um, a king that had besieged um, the, the city of uh, Jerusalem. And he was from Babylon. And so chapter 1 verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoram, Kim, king of the Ju Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into the hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God, and he, which is a small g. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. So he, uh, this king came from Babylon. And the Lord God, our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, allowed it. He besieged the king that was on the Lord's side, uh, the king of Judah. And he became the, the, the power at the time over the king Jehoiakim of Judah. This king's name was Nebuchadnezzar, and he was the king of Babylon. And verse 3. Again, I'm in Daniel 1. I'm at verse 3. And the king spake unto Asphanes, the master of the eunuchs. Eunuchs were men that their movies and things show that their privates normally or most time have been taken from them. Meaning you know, they have been castrated or cut off or made to, to be in a way that they are not usable. And so they are fully committed and dedicated to their kings and they don't have families and normally it makes them very strong most of the time. And so, again, they were eunuchs that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom. And cunning in knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily portion of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that he, that at the end thereof, they might stand before the king. So the king, this new king, wanted his eunuchs to go out and gather all of these children that were the children that were wise, you know, some of the brightest and, and smartest children in the community, in, the, in, the, in that region or in that country. And so he wanted all of the wisest children. In the modern day sense, I would guess they would be the valet valetorians and the salutatorians, the smartest, brightest, intellectual, most wisdom, children with the most wisdom, cunning, bold, strong, confident. And so they gathered these children and now we're in verse five. And the king appointed those children a portion of the king's meat. I mean, they ate from the best table. They, he wanted them to eat what he had, the quality that he had being the king. And he wanted them to have wine. And so he was trying to train up uh, other children like himself, I guess is what you would call it. 
Now, among these, verse 6, they these were the children of Judah. When the eunuchs gathered these children, they also gathered some children of, you, of Judah. And we know that Judah is the tribe of praise. Hallelujah. And so uh, now these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Unto, them, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, verse 7. For he gave unto Daniel the name Belshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah Abednego. Now we know a lot of our older saints, African Americans say a bad Negro, but it's Abednego. But Daniel proposed in his heart what he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Daniel didn't want no parts of it. He wanted to keep with the traditions that he had been learning. He wanted to keep with, uh, in his heart, he must have wanted to do something for God. He, he wanted against all odds. He wanted to defy what was not, not being just blatantly defiant, but he wanted them to know you might be king, but I belong to God. <laughs> you might be king, but I belong to God. You might be king, but I belong to God. And so, verse 9. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Daniel had favor with the prince of the eunuchs. And God, uh, God allowed that. God will allow people to have favor on you. God will put you in someone's heart that cares about you, even when it seems like no one cares. And even when it seems like you're in a rock and a hard place. Even when it seems like your back is against a wall. Daniel's back, no doubt, they didn't want to be there. They were made and forced to be there because the king had ordered for the eunuch to go out and gather these children. So they weren't at home with their families. And just by chance, there were four children out of the tribe of Judah that, had to, that was there. And so they... Uh, no doubt work with one another and because they knew they were all from the same tribe they they supported one another and with that being said in Daniel's heart he was like no I don't want no parts of the king's meat and just by chance God had placed it in this eunuch's heart to have favor with Daniel that Daniel might have favor with him he placed a liking for him in his heart according to the scriptures and so verse 11 then said Daniel of Mezar, whom the prince of the eunuch had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let him, let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee. And the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. Daniel was bold. Daniel was bold. No, I give God credit. It was God that placed this on Daniel's heart. But Daniel was bold. Daniel was bold. Because how many times do things get placed on our heart and we're too afraid to speak it? We don't even want to entertain it or think it because we think, man, this got to be crazy. You know, we don't want to believe that that's coming from God, the ideas that he's placed in your heart. We don't want to, we don't want to believe that God has placed these things in our spirit. And so what we do, we shut them down. One, because of tradition, we as a people I grew up under a slave. I hate to even bring it up because this is not a racist message and I'm not a racist. But we were brought up under a strong, uh, a stronghold. And we were brought up under taskmasters. And we were brought up under slave masters. And so sometimes those things are ingrained in our, was ingrained in our ancestors so that some of the training, and they had to, to keep us out of trouble. Some of the training that we got wasn't uh, rearing, rearing based on the knowledge of God, but rearing, rearing based on keeping us safe because they, our parents knew what the masters 
uh, would do to them if we were out of order. And so a lot of times, or we couldn't go in certain areas, so we had to be taught. We had to be taught fear first. And so overcoming being taught fear first and then being taught faith, it is something to overcome. We have to overcome being taught fear first because we were taught to fear. We were taught, and, and uh, other races don't even understand that. And I guess it was like that with all the different tribes. If you got a tribe of Judah, they were taught how to get along, how to live, how to move, how to have their being based on the tribe of Judah, based on King Jehoiakim. And now you have a king out of Babylon who's ruling. And so now we got to learn these rules. And this king wanted to give these cunning, wise, intelligent children, these choice children, his king's meat. He wanted to train them to be under him and do what he wanted them to do. But Daniel was like, no, no. I, I beg you, I beg you, let the four of us eat only pulse. Well, what is pulse? Pulse was what we understand it to be is the vegetables. Just vegetables and water. Just, that's what we understand it to be. That's what we've been taught. And I haven't taken time to honestly take that word to a commentary or take that word to the Greek or what have you, but we've been taught that it's like vegetables grind up. In fact, the word pulse is used on the blender. <laughs> and, and in the blender, you can look on your blender, there's, a, there's an option that says pulse. And so a lot of times when we try to do and implement the Daniel fast, we'll put fruits and vegetables all in a blender and let it be beat up until it's just a pulse. And so I imagine that when they were having the king's meat and when they were having wine, the other children, and the king was having king's meat and the king was having wine, Daniel asked and requested that for 10 days, let us just have the pulse. I'm, I'm, I'm almost led to say, let us just have the leftovers. Let us just have, after you're done cooking, and, and I'm not talking about the meats, but the vegetables. Let us just have the, the juices that come from your collards and from your whatever vegetables was out at that time. <clears throat> Maybe the pulse was the fruit. You know, once you've beat the fruit and you've made your wine, give us the pulse. Give us the fruit. Don't give us the fermentation, but give us what it took for you to get that. That's what we want. And give us water. We don't want wine. We want water. Give us those things for 10 days, Daniel said, and prove me that we won't be more wiser because we put God first. Uh, prove me that we won't, our skin won't be more fairer because we put God first. Prove me that we won't be stronger in mind and in wisdom and in knowledge and understanding and in sight and in vision and in hearing and in seeing because we put God first verse hallelujah hallelujah verse 12 chapter 1 daniel prove thy servants i beseech thee 10 days and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink then let our countenance be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children that eat the portion of the king's meat and as thou seest Deal with thy servants. Oh, he was bold. He said, hey, I'm going to stand on faith. I'm going to stand on God's will for me. I'm going to stand in what my spirit is telling me, what the Lord is giving me. I'm going to stand on that. And at the end of 10 days, let the outcome be what it may. At the end of 10 days, deal with me. Let's go to verse 13. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee. And the countenance of the children that eat the portion of king's meat. And thou seest deal with thy servants. Verse 14. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days. And at the end of 10 days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom 
and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians, astrolo astrologers that were in all his reign. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. So above all, verse 20 says, above all magicians, above all astrologers, they found Daniel and the other three friends of the tribe of Judah, meaning Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, before their names was changed, and we know their names were changed, he found them to be, have more wisdom than all of them because they ate pulse and they drank water. Daniel fast, y'all, 10 days, 10 days on the Daniel fast. So what wouldn't God do for you if you decided to give God 10 days and went on a Daniel fast? What would God do? Have you seen all the different reports on YouTube of the different people who have done the Daniel fast, who have spent time before God, who only had pulse? If you got a blender at home, you can go get fruit and vegetables, throw it in that blender and let it just churn and churn, put it on pulse and then dedicate it to the Lord and say, I'm going to do this and drink water for the next 10 days. And maybe the Lord will give me favor and grant me wisdom. And grant me understanding above all the magicians, above all the astrologers, above all of the people who are working all kinds of crap, but don't work for the Lord. What wouldn't God do? And so 10 day Daniel fast and then come back with a report and comment on what God has done for you. Try the Daniel 10 day fast. I need to try again the Daniel 10 day fast. We all can use uh, some of God's uh, grace and some more of God's mercy and some more of God's understanding and some more of God's wisdom. So try that 10 day fast with Daniel. Have a blessed day.